Welcome back to Photoshop. So today I had a request on how to replace a sky, but to replace a sky when there's a tree or leaves or branches in the way, how do you make that selection around those objects and then replace the sky? So this is gonna be our sky here that we're gonna replace. And this is gonna be our image. Now I've automatically duplicated that image. So we'll come down here and I can just do that again. So I had my original image and I'm gonna do Command J. This just is kind of a safer, easier way to do it. If I mess something up, I can just go right back and have the original image right there without having to do much other work or effort. This is actually pretty easy, but it always is gonna be dependent on the type of sky and leaf color that you have. Now the good thing about a sky is they're usually either gonna be white or blue. And since it's white or blue and our trees are orange, however, we do have a little bit of cast of color on these mountains, and this is gonna cause some issues, but it's something that we can work with. So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna go up to select and we're gonna select by color range. And you can see I've already done a selection here once, but what we'll do is we'll click in the sky. Then anywhere that we see white is where the selection is gonna be. As I increase this fuzziness, it's gonna increase the area that affects. But we're gonna keep this sort of low for right now. And what I'm gonna do is hold the shift key and it's gonna change that eyedropper to a plus. And what that's gonna do is it's adding different colors to the selection. So I'm slowly moving down, clicking, and adding the different colors in the sky to the selection. And I'm gonna stop right here. I don't wanna get the clouds because I don't actually wanna select the clouds. So we're gonna stop. And then I'm gonna actually increase the fuzziness right here until I get sort of a selection that I think is gonna work. Now our issues are gonna be along this hard edge here. And what will happen is if you do have something with blue or something, you'll see that it's in this area. Don't worry about it, it's easy to take out. So I've got this and you can see it's made a pretty good selection around the trees. However, we've got some area up in here, probably right in here where it didn't select anything and then areas where it did select something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna actually make a mask. And that mask is gonna show us that selection I'm actually gonna hit the Alt Option key or the Option key and click and that's gonna show me my mask. Now right here you can see it's selected some of those mountains and I don't want that. So it's really easy. We've got the color black at 100%. I'll make this a little smaller and a little bit harder just so I could be more exact. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna simply paint that out because I don't want this actually in my selection. Now right here we're gonna have to be a little bit more exact. And that looks Good, we'll just paint these little bits out here. Anything that you want in or out is really easy. You can just come in here and select that. Now, once we've made our selection, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that Alt Option and click on it again. We'll go right back to our normal image. And then we're gonna come over here to this image. And what I'll do is just a simple copy and paste. So I'm going to do Select All, which is Command A, Edit, Copy, We've copied that image. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go image. So then I'm going to come up here and go edit, paste. I could do paste in place. I'm just going to do paste. And just like that, we've now pasted this image over top of that image. And that's exactly what we want. However, where we want to have this, there is no selection yet, but that's okay. We can easily deal with that. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to my mask, hold the Alt key and drag that mask up. Now what is this is doing is just saying, hey, I only want this image here placed behind all that area. So we can turn this on and off and see that we're blending the two. Now I'm actually gonna lower the opacity of this a little bit. I actually want some of the old sky in there. That's gonna help these two skies blend together. And now, what we'll do here is I will turn this on and off so you can see what it looks like. So this is the old sky and then blending with the new sky. Old sky, blending with the new sky. And you can see we're leaving part of that old sky in there. We didn't 
actually have this little area, let me switch, right in here selected. So what happens, the reason I didn't select that out is because I thought it would work as a good transition between the two. Now, if I did want to come in here, what I can do is I can grab my brush and you want to lower your flow down really low. And what I'm going to do is just take the white color and I can just sort of paint this in a little bit. And that will give me a little bit better transition if I wanted to do that. So I can come in here and sort of paint over that. Get some of the sky here in with the other sky. But actually, I like it kind of having that little light little thing right there breaking up that sky. But anything you'd want to do, you can easily just come in here and paint it until you get a good transition. So the more you go over it, the more you're going to apply that sky to this image here. And just like that, you now have a sky put behind leaves into an image. Hopefully that was helpful and you learned a little bit about how to apply skies behind leaves inside a photograph. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.